All right. Uh, case six, a 30-year-old woman with a large scalp mass. Hello? You hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try this one. Um, so here we can see a well, soft tissue tumor composed of spindle cells in which there are highly cellular areas um, as well as areas with less cellularity. Good. Um, it's highly vascular and it includes these branching staghorn vessels of various sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are very dilated and some of them are smaller vessels. Um, Good. Now on high power, I can see the cells are bland, uh, kind of plump spindle cells. I can see no obvious mitosis here. Right. And there's collagen in between the cells in different, of different densities, depending on the cellularity of the, uh, of the area we're looking at. Yeah, right. Here's more and, cellular. And then yeah. just for contrast, let's go over to this other piece over here. And you can see this area is much less cellular and has a lot yes. more collagen in between, just like you described. Very nice. Yeah, indeed. So, so what do you uh, think or what's your differential? Oh, yeah. So I think this is good for a solitary fibrous tumor morphologically, although I did consider a, a dermatofibrous sarcoma protuberance as well. But I can see no fat entrapment in this whole tumor. So that makes me favor a solitary fibrous tumor. I also thought this could be maybe a monophasic synovial sarcoma, although um, we could stain that for CD34. Hopefully it'll come back negative and it'll help me exclude that. And eventually use a STAT6 to confirm solitary fibrous tumor if it is indeed this, so. <laughs> Excellent differential. So, and, and this is one where you you brought up all of the entities that we need to consider. So this is a good, this is a trick, okay? And that's why I showed this one because look at how dramatically hemangioperiocytic or staghorn the vessels are, which is the classic feature that we see in solitary fibrous tumor. Also, mm -hmm. you, as you noted, there's variability. There's more cellular areas, less cellular, more collagenous areas, another feature of solitary fibrous tumor. And I didn't show you guys this slide, but here's the CD34, blazing positive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think oh. that you really nicely pointed out, it, you know, DFSP could look like this too. And that's actually what this is. This is a DFSP, a really tricky oh, wow. one because it's huge for one thing. Mm -hmm. And number two, the fat trapping, where is it? And I, the first time I saw one like this, I totally was like, I, I was in fellowship and I was like, Dr. Weiss, how can this be DFSP? There's no fat entrapment. I just showed you that DFSP. This is, you know, they should have fat entrapment like this, right? That's the classic thing. The infiltrated growth into the fat is the feature we all learn about. But the problem is, is sometimes when DFSPs grow, they tend to, what I've seen a lot of times, they grow until they hit fascia. I don't feel like they often invade beyond fascia. They can, but it's uncommon. I feel like they tend to hit fascia. They expand out laterally along the subcutis and along the top of the fascia. But once they do that, they wipe out and eventually entrap or destroy, remove all the fat. And so what used to all be fat gets eventually totally overrun by tumor. Let me go back real quick and I'll show you there is fat trapping. It's extremely focal in this case. This is about the only area and I know it's frustrating and I know you guys are gonna hate me for this, but it's important to learn because, actually I can't even find it now. There's just a few adipocytes right in here, just a couple of them that at the very edge. And sometimes that's what DFSP will do. It will make this smooth border because it hits up against fascia. I think this is like down by the galea, basically. This is pushing onto the skull, which in, you know, scalp, even the trunk is described as the, the most classic site for DFSP, a, a significant subset occur on the head and neck, particularly the scalp. I, I know many patients through working online um, that have scalp um, DFSP and it's particularly problematic area because you have to go all the way down to the skull. They need to have big flaps to reconstruct. It's really morbid. So um, the cells are very bland. And um, the, so when fat entrapment is very focal, it can be quite hard. It also is quite hard when you have hemangioparasitic vessels. DFSP is one of the many tumors that can have staghorn or so-called hemangioparasitic branching ectatic vessels. Solitary fibrous tumor is the classic one, but also synovial sarcoma, like you said. DFSP, particularly really big cellular ones, often with fibrous sarcomatous transformation, tend to have really prominent staghorn vessels and many other things. So we recognize that that's a vascular pattern that can be useful, but definitely not specific. Um, the, uh, where's the other thing I was gonna show you? Hold on. Here is the, the, um, the other clue. Even without the fat trapping, the one thing here that really is helpful, this is story form, look at that. See how this is like whirling, swirling, pinwheel pattern. You can describe this a thousand ways, 
But it's one of those things you you just got to see it. And once you've seen it enough, you're like, oh, that's story form. This is like as story form as you could ask for. It's like this perfect whirling, swirling. Like they're like little tiny short fascicles that constantly are rotating around. Again, you can try to explain it a bunch of ways, but that is to me like the very, very prototypical example, characteristic example of story form pattern. And that's something I would feel that is really characteristic. DFSP usually has really prominent story form pattern. Not always though. And um, other things like dermatofibromas can have story form patterns. So it's not specific at all. But uh, there, look at this. This is such nice story form. Um, so yes, this is one where definitely it's worthwhile to do um, stains to make sure that you're dealing with DFSP, not solitary fibrous tumors. Stat six would solve that problem. Um, uh, you would usually have a lot more mitotic activity in a synovial sarcoma and they'd be rare next to the skin, but definitely could have some overlapping features. So this is a, a very challenging, tricky example of what DFSP can do when it gets really large. And even though here, this is not very mitotically active and it's, it's cellular, but it's not making herringbone fascicles. But when I see a real big DFSP that's starting to get cellular, I start worrying about fibrosarcomatous kind of higher grade transformation. And this case did have some, but it's very focal. But I'll show you just so you can see. When, when I like to call things fibrosarcomatous transformation is once the tumor is the cellular areas of the tumor start leaving the story form pattern and instead becoming long fascicles that intersect together at sharp angles and it looks like they're kind of coming up out of the um the screen at us kind of the herringbone pattern and that's what it's beginning to do here we're getting longer fascicles more of a herringbone pattern so to me i would call this fibrosarcomatous it is a bit subjective about when to call things fibrosarcomatous but i think this to me meets criteria and they, they still have a good prognosis but there is a, a higher chance to metastasize uh, for fibrosarcomatous DFSP. I think it's like 15% is what most, not all studies, but most studies say. Whereas regular DFSP, it's like a couple percent. It's very, I've only, I think seen like one metastatic DFSP, really, really quite uncommon. But they are locally aggressive. They can recur multiple times. They require large surgeries. They are a very morbid disease because of their tendency for a locally aggressive repeated recurrences. I've known patients that have had multiple recurrences, uh, particularly ones that are on the scalp uh, because it's hard to clear them. Oh, and look, a couple of dipocytes just hanging out and hiding in there. Very tricky, huh? So this is a good example of a DFSP with some fibrous sarcomatous areas, some areas mimicking solitary fibrous tumor, uh, really good, excellent differential diagnosis and excellent approach to this case. All right.